There are degrees and kinds of solitude. An island in a lake has one kind. But lakes have boats, and there is always the chance that one might land to pay you a visit. A peak in the clouds has another kind. But most peaks have trails, and trails have tourists. I know of no solitude so secure as one guarded by a spring flood, nor do the geese, who have seen more kinds and degrees of aloneness than I have known. That was from Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. We made the short pilgrimage to Sand County, and these are some of the pastoral farming scenes along the country road that took us to the property of Aldo Leopold. Lots of small farms and corn and cows, much as you'd expect from this part of Wisconsin. It felt like the end of a pilgrimage. One of the places I was most anxious to see in Wisconsin was this property, to view the place where Leopold penned so many observations of nature. And what did we find? Well, a shack. An old chicken coop that was converted into a cabin and then enlarged to hold bunks for his family. This is the original shack. And it This reminded me of another shack I visited six years ago, the shack at Walden Pond where Henry David Thoreau went in order to live deliberately. This is a replica recreated from the exact description in Walden. That was preeminently an individual's project. In Walden, Thoreau even complains about company. It's hard to imagine Thoreau married. There were no bunk beds in his cabin. Out of Leopold's shack was for a family, which as you can see here in a picture, and maybe that is exactly what distinguishes him from Thoreau. Here is Aldo Leopold talking about his land ethic. All ethics, so far evolved, rest upon a single premise, that the individual is a member of a community of interdependent parts. His instincts prompt him to compete for his place in that community, but his ethics prompt him also to cooperate, perhaps in order that there may be a place to compete for. The land ethic simply enlarges the boundaries of the community to include soils, waters, plants, and animals, or collectively, the land. Leopold, oddly, is harder to know than Thoreau. One longs to get a glimpse into the window of his life, to imagine how he lived. This curiosity leaps forward when visiting the shack itself. I peered into the window. There are the bunks where his children slept. And here is the old door at the entrance. Note the cracked white paint. These days we buy paint to crack with age like that. The hearth, mythical center of family life. Two of the original lamps stand there. The stone still blackened, the rough-hewn wood. It could be cozy here in the harsh north. Outside is the outhouse, known to the family as the Parthenon. All these details about life come from family memories. You'll be hard-pressed to find them in the Sand County Almanac. I should have mentioned that we came here as part of a group from Lawrence University, led by a volunteer from the Aldo Leopold Foundation. We are here making the short trek from the cabin down to the bank of the Wisconsin River. The odd thing about this trek to the river is that we were walking on sand, a sign that the river had once run further south. This came as a surprise to some of us. What's that, Em? It's sand, look, see? Look, 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 let me see it, let me see that better. <laughs> The river stretches out beautifully before the eye. It's a wonderful sight to visit in the fall. Yet something is missing. It's different to live day in, day out with a landscape. To get up in the early morning and hear the sounds of birds, as Leopold so eloquently describes. To get to know the bounded lives of creatures in the wood. To see the details of this landscape in all the changing light of the year. 
This is the wonder of Sand County Almanac. These intimate forest details can be read and enjoyed in a paperback while sitting in a modern car. Thousands make a very different pilgrimage to a site that while only about 10 minutes away represents a very different project with a different view of nature and its value. It's a vast domain of asphalt. This is the Ho-Chunk Hotel and Casino. I imagine Leopold would have written about gambling enthusiasts in the same way that he describes hunters on their excited way to the north. Here, come October, I sit in the solitude of my tamaracks and hear the hunters' cars roaring up the highway, hell-bent for the crowded counties to the north. I chuckle as I picture their dancing speedometers, their strained faces, their eager eyes glued on the northward horizon. I'm sure Leopold would be in agreement with me about the value of just listening to the rain.